2004 Chevy SSR, the pretend roadster. Super Sport Roadster or SSR, that's what Chevy called this behemoth of a car that barely got its own wheels rolling. Folks were expecting a racing stallion but got a lazy mule instead. It was a shiny piece of retro-styled failure that got winded faster than a geriatric hamster on a wheel. Chevy was so busy making it look good, they forgot to check if it could actually run. But hey, at least it looked good standing still in your driveway. Pontiac Aztec, universally unloved. Remember that kid in school who got picked last for every team? Yeah, that was the Pontiac Aztec of the car world. With a face only a mother could love and a plastic body that felt as safe as a tissue in a hailstorm. Once the price tag was announced, folks noped out faster than a cat from a cold bath. The Pontiac Aztec, because not all crossovers are meant to survive. The Mustang too, a donkey in a horse's clothing. Just like that regrettable tattoo from Spring Break, Ford brought us the Mustang II, a sad clone of the Pinto. It was marketed as a feisty roadster but ended up being about as exciting as watching paint dry. Critics compared it to the AMC Gremlin, but honestly, that was an insult to Gremlins. The Mustang II, the car equivalent of an epic facepalm. The Ghost of the Lincoln Blackwood. Remember the Lincoln Blackwood? No? You're not alone. In 2002, Lincoln and Ford created this unicorn of a luxury pickup. Turns out, folks didn't really want a fancy schmancy truck with a plush interior that was better suited for a posh limo. Even its rear wheel drive seemed as out of place as pineapple on pizza. Disappearing faster than your socks in the dryer, the Lincoln Blackwood was a blink and you miss it experiment. Lamborghini LM002 When Lembo went off road, Lamborghini thought they could make an off road vehicle. No, really, they did. It was like asking a ballet dancer to wrestle sumo. Marketed initially to the American military, Lamborghini gave us the LM002, the world's most glamorous mud plugger. Who knew that people who could afford a Lembo didn't want to muck it up off road? In the end, the LM002 was remembered as that time Lamborghini went through a weird phase and tried to make a truck. 1975 AMC Pacer, the demolition derby dream. Welcome to the 70s, folks, where bigger is better, even in compact cars. Meet the 1975 AMC Pacer, a car that could have been a rock star but ended up playing second fiddle at best. It boasted a size to make other compact cars jealous, and fuel economy that was pretty rad for the time. The catch? It drove like a tank on roller skates. It was a total blast if you were a professional stunt driver, but if you just wanted to commute without fearing for your life, the Pacer might not have been your cup of tea. Maserati by Turbo, the bad apple. Imagine being so bad you get banished from a country. That was the Maserati by Turbo in the early 80s. It was Maserati's attempt at making a more wallet-friendly sports car, but instead, it got the boot from America. But like that embarrassing family member who just can't take a hint, Maserati kept churning out by turbos for overseas markets until 1997. Thankfully, the Maserati Spider, which was the rich and suave cousin, came to the rescue in 2002 racking up over 800 orders before it even left the showroom. The Cadillac Fleetwood, king of cringe. Cadillac Fleetwood, the car equivalent of that guy who trips up the stairs, spills coffee on himself and then knocks over a plant. Produced from 1976 to 1996, this long wheelbase wonder was notorious for stalling, jerking, and making more awkward sounds than a preteen boy's voice cracking. By the end of its run in 96, it was like the sad, lonely kid at the party with only 15,109 units made, a far cry from its better days in 93. The unfortunate Ferrari Mondial 8. There's a saying, not all that glitters is gold. Enter the Ferrari Mondial 8, the car that seemed to take that saying as a personal challenge. Released in 1980, it was met with reviews like impressive and respectable. A year later, it was more like disastrous and shocking. Legend has it that every Mondial 8 system failed every single one. It's no surprise Time magazine called it the eighth worst car of all time. Ouch. Cadillac Cimarron, the near Mississippi. If the Cadillac Cimarron was a movie, it'd be a disaster flick. Introduced in 1982, this car was so bad it almost wrote Cadillac's obituary. GM thought they were innovating by going smaller but what they nearly did was send Cadillac to the auto graveyard. Few cars can claim they were a hair's breadth from ending an entire brand. Cimarron, you're in a league of your own. Luckily, GM didn't pull the plug, and Cadillac lives on. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want more, don't forget to smash that subscribe button.